Hello, everyone. How's everyone feeling after lunch? Refreshed, ready to go. Great. Okay. Uh, this is definitely not my best talk title of all time. It's very jargony, sort of. Uh, sounds good to managers, I think. <laughs> Maybe I wrote this during like feedback cycle or something. And I was telling my uh, friend who's a public health PhD about how I was coming to London to give this talk. She's like, oh, what's your talk about? And I gave her the title and she looked at me like I had two heads. And I realized in that moment it was not just because she works in a very different industry, but it's because it, it doesn't quite convey what I think I'm going to convey today. And I think actually it dovetails really well off of what Blanca was saying earlier. So we're going to start by dissecting this a little bit. What I mean by context switching is I mean these periods of anticipated interruption. So how many of you here are part of an on-call rotation? Okay. How many of you are on call right now? Oh, ballsy. I like it. <laughs> um, the other way that you can be in a period of anticipated interruption is if you have bug triage duty. Now, does that sort of resonate with people? Do people, are, are people on bug triage duty every so often? Yes. Okay. Some. Great. Um, I'll get into how we handle this at Slack in a minute or two, specifically on my team, but this is the context switching that I'm referring to. It's periods where you know you're likely going to get interrupted in some way. So you're probably not going to be able to do a sustained chunk of that deep focus work that a lot of us do. So for me, it's Escal Perf Infra. Escal is short for escalation, and it's a weekly rotation for us. It starts uh, on Wednesdays midday and ends the next Wednesday midday where one of our teammates responds to incoming inqu inquiries from other people at the company because we are mostly a developer tooling team. And so it's mostly other engineers asking us random questions or asking us to review their load test plan or telling me that the flame graph tooling isn't working for the 15th time. And when these inquiries come in, they're just coming in at completely random intervals, right? And I'm on the East Coast, but a significant portion of Slack engineering is spread throughout the country. Um, there's some in Australia, which write in every so often, and the other half of my team is based out on the West Coast. And so sometimes these messages come in with low-ish urgency, but you know, well after I've figured out that I need to make some dinner and convince my son to eat it. So uh, everything's super asynchronous. And so I might be responding to this message immediately as I see it come in, and we might get into a groove and sort of answer everything in thread and hash it all out, but we might as well also be spreading this over several days if we're just playing tag team. And I don't know about you, but my first instinct when I'm either waiting for my tests to run or my code to compile or for someone to get back to me in a thread is um, I pull out my phone. How many of you do this also? It's okay. You're, you're in good company. Um, in case you were wondering, it is sheep shearing season in New Hampshire right now where I live. Um, if I was on TikTok, that would be a problem. But more seriously, right? Like after a day of triaging a bunch of different requests coming in, uh, the, everything sort of feels like it was interwoven. See what I did there uh, with sheep shearing content. I end up feeling a lot like this. Do some of you also feel like this at the end of the day? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, and I think that that feeling comes from not actually being pulled into a bunch of different directions, but rather the anticipation of being pulled in a million different directions, right? There's that dread sort of hanging over you when you're on call, like, oh, I could get paged and I'm in the shower right now. What would happen? I don't mind so much being in incidents and resolving incidents. I'm a little bit like Blanca, actually. Uh, but I like choosing to be in those incidents, and I don't really like them being thrust upon me at any given moment. And so I think a lot of that feeling for me comes from that. And that's where the first part of the title comes into play, about really just get something done during this time so that you can try to assuage the dread of impending inquiries or pages or whatever it is. And what I figured out after a bunch of years of being on call, being on various kinds of triage duties, um, is that these are the three key components to success. First, you have to set the mood. Lighting a candle, great. 
Two, you have to choose the right kinds of tasks to tackle. Again, this ties really well into Blanca's talk earlier. Whoever uh, chose the talks for this track really had it together. Um, and then third is mindset. So first, you can set the mood, control your environment. If you have a playlist that you use to get things done, this is the time to pull it out. If it keeps you focused, it keeps you engaged in your work, regardless of what it is, just pull that out. Or if you're like me and music of literally any kind is the worst distraction in the world, if it's classical music, you start anticipating that this building, and then you're like, oh yes, this is the canon part of the 1812 overture. Yeah, it doesn't work for me. Or Taylor Swift, I know all the words, that's a problem, I won't get anything done. Um, then I suggest pink or brown noise. If you have small children, do not pull out the white noise, you will fall asleep. If you don't know about pink or brown noise, I asked ChatGPT for you. You can read this later. <laughs> Put your phone on Do Not Disturb, if you can, uh, or set some very, very aggressive time limits on all of those distraction-type apps. Um, better yet, if you can chuck it out the window, just chuck it out the window altogether. And then it's important to plan stretching breaks. Um, my mom owns a Pilates studio, so um, I've gotten this whole stretching thing is drilled into me over a number of years. Um, it's very important to move your body. You feel a lot better. One of the potential risks of being on call or being in these triaging situations is that you might get dragged into something, an incident, a weird bug, whatever it is, for hours, and then suddenly you look up and it's 4 p.m., and you're like, oh, I didn't eat lunch. Um, the last time I had water was yesterday. <laughs> and uh, definitely not alone. It's really, really important to make sure that you have those times set out for you so you feel like time is actually passing and you have this grounding thing to come back to. Um, I don't know, every one to two hours, make sure that you're enforcing that for yourself. Next, this is the actually really difficult part, is choosing the right kinds of tasks to tackle during this time. And that's really hard for us as Staff Plus engineers because uh, a lot of our tasks involve this kind of deep work. It takes sustained, consistent mental focus to get the things that we need to get done. And those are things like drafting tech specs or reviewing really tricky pieces of code, mentoring. You can't really mentor while you like are waiting for a page debugging something really complicated. You just can't do those things really effectively. Just don't attempt to do it at all. This is not the week, this is not the two weeks, this is not the day. Whatever that period of time of anticipated interruption is, this is not the time to do it. Tell your team, make this a norm. I'm on call this week. My goal is to answer pages and maybe look at this tiny little other thing. That's it. You'll just get frustrated, you'll get pulled away, and you probably won't actually make any measurable progress. And if you do, you might not even remember what progress you made. <laughs> so you need to opt for small repetitive tasks. So maintenance, great example, keeping the lights on, that KTLO work, upgrade a few dependencies that you've been meaning to upgrade, but you haven't yet. How many of us have that on the backlog? <laughs> Um, maybe grooming the backlog, update a little piece of documentation, fix a pesky bug that no one really quite cares about because it hasn't been like quite logged, but it's bothering you. This is very important to me. I work in developer tooling, so, you know. Get those things done. Turns out a lot of these tasks are non-promotable tasks. And if there's one thing that I want you all to take away today, is that you should focus on non-promotable tasks during this period of time. That means it's the kind of task that it's valuable, it's not valuable, sorry, for more en junior engineers on your team to be doing. They are non-promotable. We are at the top end of the engineering ladders. We're, we, some of us, literally, there is no level to move beyond that. We are not looking to get promoted. Many of us, some of us are, sure. But in, in many ways, our promotion is promoting other people, more junior engineers on our teams. So focus on those tasks. We should be growing our teammates. And we're doing that by moving these non-promotable tasks out of their queue. It's like doing the dishes, okay? Doing the dishes, it's very clear. You washed this plate, it's in the sink, you washed it. Okay, now it goes into the drying rack. You keep going. 
if you get interrupted while you're doing the dishes, maybe you're even happy about it. And you can go do that other thing and come back to the dishes and you ex know exactly where you left off. And the thing is, no one's going to thank you for doing the dishes. If someone is thanking you for doing the dishes, I would like to become friends with that person also. Um, that sounds like a great affirmation. But no one really is going to thank you for doing the dishes. It's just a thing that needs to get done. And if more important things are coming into your environment, like my son wanting another strawberry, then I will give him another strawberry and I'll come back to the dishes and it'll be fine. And that's the kind of work that you want to be doing during these periods of anticipated interruption. But because these are really personal to us, these kinds of tasks, you need to keep a backlog of your own. This is not a team level backlog. This is your own backlog. Small, what's small and repetitive for you might not be for someone else. And then finally, mindset. I couldn't finish this talk without talking a little bit about this magical book. I feel like everyone's just pushing books today. The book lobby has really succeeded in infiltrating this conference. Um, 4,000 hours, really fabulous book. The only way I get to go through books these days is audiobooks. The author reads the book. It's very good. Honestly, uh, I realize this is a cop-out way to end this talk, but uh, just accept that you will not be as productive as you want it to be. <laughs> that is simply not the time. Try next week. You'll probably have better luck. And with that, that's it for me. You can find me most places on the internet as QC Mode. Thank you very much.